Hi everyone and welcome to RC Monday. So this week we've got a bit of a treat. We have got the CQ Control 1 in 32 Man with Low Loader. So this is the articulated lorry. There are actually two, but this is the one which took my fancy because you could drive another tractor onto the back of it. The other one is just a tipper truck. So this is the one I've gone for. We might do the other one in the future, but for now this is going to be a real treat. So let's get straight into it. The box has got a bit of a bash, but it's not too bad. So in the top we have got the instruction manual, we always get an instruction manual, always handy to have. And then under here we have got everything else. So I've just removed the entire insert with everything in, this is so you can get a better view and there's better light as well. Um, we'll, we'll start from the left, go across and then we'll go obviously down to the trailer. Um, the tractor unit is first and it's incredibly heavy. It's mainly made out of metal. There is a small amount of plastic on it, but the majority of it is metal. Um, I will, of course, look at the specs in a minute or two to see how heavy it actually is. But for such a small scale truck, it seems incredibly well built and very heavy. So very impressed so far just by that. Um, just the weight of it gives you a good indication that it is well built. Next, we can move this across. We have got the remote controller and the back has already been removed. The back cover and the screw are both in here so we can put them on in a minute. Makes it easier for putting the batteries in, just speeds things up. Um, and yeah, we've got, we've got the plastic film around here. Someone actually commented two weeks ago on my previous video saying, is it all cracked? Well, no, it's just the film. I just didn't remove it off that other controller. Um, just so it doesn't get scratched. But yeah, that is the remote control. We've then got the charger, and this actually couples up as a charger for both of the batteries. You've got the larger one for the truck, and you've got the smaller one for the trailer, and you can actually put both of them in there. Not at the same time, but you can charge both from the same charger, which of course makes everything a lot more compact, and I'm sure in the long run keeps the cost down. Underneath the cardboard insert there, we've got the charger. This is the actual adapter, which goes to the charger unit and when I first received it it was just a European plug like this obviously that's no good over here so I just went on eBay I got a really cheap one and it does a fantastic job just converts it over to uh, UK standard 3 pin and actually this actually couples up as an adapter I think for every country in the world so pretty good buy really having one of those like I say the only reason why I got the one with the European plug is because for a start, it was cheaper. Why pay more for the same thing? And also the delivery was faster as well. So that's why I went for that. I have already had that out. That was only to charge everything up so we could just do one, one recording here of the video instead of having to do the first unboxing part and then charge everything up and then do it later. After that, we have now got the trailer. And yeah, there is a lot of powered things on this trailer. That is why it's got a battery. We'll take a, look, a closer look at that in a minute, but basically the battery goes inside, the stabilizers come down, and it's got working lights on the back, and also the tailgate, the ramp, that also goes down and up. After that, we have got the instruction manual, which is something I've already looked through, just to make sure I know how to set it up and everything, make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Um, but it tells you everything, really, how to uh, use the thing, how to set it up, how to charge a battery, how to install batteries into the handset, so, very handy document, but what I'm looking for is a page which I haven't actually seen yet, and that is the specification page. The tractors have it, I don't know if the lorry does. It's a shame if it doesn't. I don't think it does tell you anywhere. Um, of course, it could go and weigh it. This is mainly talking about how to use it safely, how to set it up, and how to add multiple units to a radio controlled handset. So no, I don't think it does. Um, so anyway, let's move on. Let's, let's have a closer look at it. So here it is at the front. We've got all the highly detailed parts. These are the wing mirrors obviously, but these are replaceable. They have provided two more, just in case you snap them off. It also has working beacons, working indicators, working headlights, and uh, the, the same goes for the trailer as well. On the back we've got the fifth wheel 
and the way that the fifth wheel actually attaches to the trailer on this model is actually quite clever. On the handset there is a lever and you press it and a little tab comes out in the middle of the fifth wheel and it locks it on to the trailer. The trailer has got a little thing hanging down underneath and uh, yeah it just basically locks it in there. Very ingenious idea. So you may ask, where does the battery go? Well you've probably seen now from this shot that there is an off on button just here although this is just a flap which comes off. Your battery is here, it's a 3.7 volt battery from CQ. Basically all you do is press it into there as far as it will go and then the flap just goes back on. It is simple to do but usually when I'm doing this on camera it doesn't go well. Not too bad. Now for the trailer I've not actually put it in the trailer yet, but it can't be too hard. There's a flap on the side, and then it looks like it goes in this way around. And there we go. Very simple. So welcome to the farm area. We are now in the yard, and we've got the trailer and the, the cab, the tractor unit here. And I first turned this control on just now, and the trailer actually functioned. And it acts as a different unit to the lorry. You don't actually have to have a physical wire running from the tractor unit to the trailer, which is obviously very nice because obviously they can they can dangle down and, and get caught and stuff. So that is a much better feature than the older ones. So what we need to do now is we need to put the stabilizers up on the trailer so we can then reverse in and then lock the fifth wheel onto the trailer. So to do that, we need to be on the right setting. The trailer is being recognized as B and the lorry, the cab, is being recognised as A. So we just have to swap between the two. Now there is a little, a little twist dial here and this will make the stabilisers go up and down. As you can see, and down again. So now the stabilisers are up, we now want to switch to A and we want to connect onto the tractor unit. So now we're on to A. This is the trickier part. I think it's under there. So now what we want to do is we want to lock it onto there. There's a little flick switch here. You'll hear that noise. And it should have put the little tab across and it should now have locked the trailer onto the tractor. What we now need to do is of course put the stabilizers back up otherwise they're going to be dragging along the floor. And also, it has now recognised both of them on the handset, so we've now got A and B selected, so we can use them both at the same time without having to keep swapping. So with a bit of luck, the trailer is now attached. Obviously I haven't tried to pull it by hand, so it might come off, I might drive off here and the trailer will just fall off. But hopefully, I got it all lined up and the locking pin was in place. So let's just creep forward slowly. Oh, fantastic. It's definitely in. So now I can imagine you want me to drive a tractor onto the trailer and transport it around. Obviously I'm going to have to move from here and get a bit more space so I'm going to go onto a hard floor in a minute. But let's get the tractor loaded up first of all. Now for those of you who are interested in the lights on these things, you can see we've got the left indicator on at the moment. We've also got the right indicator, which also doubles up as a hazard light. And then if we turn the left indicator off, we've then just got the right indicator. We've also got headlights, main headlights, which are actually really bright if you look straight into them. And also two different settings on the flashing lights. That's the first setting, and there is another mode as well. So there it is with the first mode of the beacons on and then the second mode is like that, just flashing on off. Then of course if we turn the main headlights off we've got the hazard warning lights which have one we're indicating. And then finally just the headlights on their own. 
Now for the trailer, the trailer obviously has tail lights and also it has indicators as well which also couple up as warning lights. And I actually really like the trailer ones. All LED I think. So I think it's time now to go and drive this thing where there's a bit more space. The lighting won't be fantastic, just as an early warning, but at least there'll be more space to actually use it. So there we have it, the MAN 1 in 32 from CQ Control, the MAN with low loader. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Please do join me again in two weeks time for another episode of RC Monday. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.